Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, we will do a presentation of Polygon ID. And uh, my name is Dima. I'm developer of uh, Polygon ID uh, of the core protocol. And this is Sasha. He's also de developer and uh, team lead of our protocol team. So Sasha will do the presentation and explanation of the core concept. And I, after this, uh, I will do the presentation of the demo tooling and how you can build with Polygon ID. Thank you. So what's uh, Polygon ID? Polygon ID is a self-sovereign identity solution. It's bu built uh, with uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs technology and based on uh, verifiable credential standards and, and decentralized identifiers. So in this concept of identity, we have uh, three main uh, parties. It's a uh, user, identity holder, we have also verifier, the one who receives data and and uh, consumes it, and also issuer. It's a source of trust who is issuing credentials to to the user. So, in let's say we have issuer that is a KYC provider. It could be um, like uh, we know Jumio or Onfido. Let's say that have done KYC verification of your identity and then issues to you credential that has, uh, for example, your passport data, country of residence, date of birth, and so on. And then later uh, you apply uh, for a job and you need to, to prove that you are eligible, uh, for example, uh, for, for this uh, a DAO grant or whatever. And you need to prove that you are from a um, non-sanctioned country and uh, that you are over 18 and so on. So based on this, Verifier can ask you a question. Uh, are you over 18 and, and so on. And you as a user can just prove that this is true, that you are eligible without revealing any of the data. It's just that, that yes, uh, I have a credential that states, uh, that satisfies them requirements that um, the verifier have set and um, for this to work we have created a set of tools a protocol and um, for for each of these parties we have a number of tools to to be used uh, for for the users and for the wallet providers it's a mobile application and also is the case to to embed it in into existing mobile wallets and also maybe web extensions and snaps then for for the issuers we have issuer node it's a, a application that can be run on on your server to issue credential to to the user and then you sh user would be able to fetch it uh, store on his own device and prove some statements. Also for, for the issuer, we have schema builder because verifiable credentials, they are bu uh, built on top of the schemas. And uh, to facilitate this process, to make it easier for, for the issuers uh, to create credentials, we have built a schema builder. It's a, uh, just a very simple interface and Dima will be showing it today how to create your own schema, upload it, store, and then import later into the issuer node and actually use it to, to issue credential. This is also used, uh, this, the schema is also used uh, on the verifier side. Verifier needs to ask questions based on this schema, like um, do you have credential uh, of um, uh, passport type, and then based on, on this credential and this schema, I would be asking additional questions like, uh, are you over 18, country of residence, and so on. And for it, uh, to make this query easier, we have built another tool that is Query Builder. And just because we have, uh, uh, it, it's pretty simple, but, but still you need to know how, how to use it, uh, ZK Query Language. And also, it's uh, still in, in development, but uh, 
kind of um, available uh, for early adopters and early testers just on the testnet we have on-chain issuer it's a decentralized uh, issuer that um, could be trustless in the way that in usual models we have issuer that uh, is working somehow off-chain it does processing of data and then later issues credential but this process is not transparent to to anyone and on-chain issuer is solving this in a way that uh, all the rules everything on how credential is issued what data was supplied uh, is it uh, true or not is done everything on chain that's why it's uh, um, fully transparent and auditable how it was created to whom and so on and um, here's QR code where you can get our tutorials our documentation and read about everything and now Dima will show how it works okay show time um, so we will start with a schema builder so we'll build our schema then we'll create a create credential fetch it to our phone and perform verification with zero knowledge proof uh, verification on the background because we have limited time I will try to be like super fast okay so this is our schema builder so we can try to build a schema let's call this is uh, global take global version zero one just yeah then we need to define the attributes that will be stored in our schema i will call this maybe score score <laughs> and select a type so the data types, this is very important because this is types that you can then verify in zero knowledge proofs. So here right now, this is supported types that we have. It's like integer, boolean, numbers, and strings. Um, the most maybe important, this is integers because you can do some query operations inside zero knowledge with strings, but the rest is uh, also possible. But boolean technically, this is zero and one, which is uh, obvious, but strings, will be stored as a hash of your data inside the circuits and you can do selective disclosure. Maybe you will have a document and uh, verifier will ask, hey, can you disclose this value to me? Can you disclose this document for me? And you can show the whole document and prove that this document actually stored it in your credential. It's not maybe like useful for all of the cases, but for some KYC and very like specific verifications is very important um, case. So we will do something with integers, this score okay i need to connect my metamask to publish this on ipfs so what is the changes uh, for our schemas right now we're publishing them for schema builder on ipfs so schemas can be stored on ipfs this is not necessary you still can store them in some like on github in like on your http server but for the like our schema builder we decided that they will be stored on the ipfs so up to you where you will store it uh, but if you will create this uh, on uh, in our schema builder and they will be published to ipfs but you can download there is a button <laughs> to download and you will have the bundle with the schemas so i will do the publishing category okay so this is a schema Right now, we can create a credential with this schema. I will go to our UI. First thing that we need to do is just uh, import the schema that we created. I just... Okay, I just import the schema. I have this is global and I can issue this to my wallet. So, a couple words uh, about this uh, like credential link and uh, data direct issuance. For direct issuance, you need to know in advance uh, identifier of your user. For example, if you will build a platform or like some DAO, you will know because users will log in, so you will know the identifier of the user. 
then maybe you will pass some KYC, maybe like uh, joining the groups and so on, and you can like issue credential and send push notification with this credential. If you don't know the identifier in advance, and maybe we want to just uh, distribute these credentials to your group members, maybe through the ch Telegram channel or just put the QR code somewhere on is global. You can do this through credential link. For example, I can put here like 10 credentials. This is max maximum number of credentials that can be issued. So first 10 people will have this credential. Maybe this is, you can do some campaign, maybe some game or like, I don't know, some event based on this and can just engage, okay? 10 first people who can, who can get this credential can go to my website, to my DApp and will be rewarded for, for this interaction. Okay, so I will put here a score, I know, 100. It's good, looks uh, like a good score. Uh, okay, uh, proof types. We have a signature type. This is just uh, proof types that issuer just sign your credential. He don't need to publish it in anywhere, just signature, that's it. For Merkle tree proof types, this is credential that is anchored on chain. For this, issuer need to send transaction on chain and publish his uh, state. So this uh, will mean that your credential was issued at some specific time, uh, like timestamp. So for some use cases, it may be important or maybe some uh, on-chain use cases uh, can be important, but it's up to you. For signatures, this is just kind of free issuance. You don't need to spend like gas or like anything. Okay, so expiration date, you can embed in your, not can, but you have to <laughs> embed the expiration date in your credentials because during the zero knowledge proofs verification, we're also checking the expiration date. So with this, you can play with short living credential, maybe a credential can live for one second, for one hour, or like for, for a few years. It depends on your business cases and business requirements. So I'm creating the, this link, and now I'll fetch a credential to my phone. Let <laughs> me just connect. Just a second, I'll try to share a screen. So, connect with my wallet. <laughs> Maybe internet is not the best here, so we need to wait a little bit. So the things that I have done right now, I just did uh, authentication. Oh, right like now. Okay. I need to receive the credential on uh, by push notifications, but maybe because of the lack of the connection, I just fetch through the on this uh, QR code. While uh, I'm waiting, I will show you the next step. So, so right now your user has a credential on his phone. Right now it's just the responsibility of the user to communicate with the verifier. So, and for this verifier need to build the request to the user. So as you have a schema and your, your verifier can get the schema and, okay, not so fast. I can build. Rebuilder. I can I can build the uh, the query. So I put the, my URL. I select the type embedded in this uh, schema, and now I can just ask some specific question. So this is a score, and I can cast. Okay, put a condition. It should be less than two hundred. Mm -hmm. So this you, so you can co copy and just paste in your JavaScript code, but uh, I, I will show you on our like demo application how to perform the verification. So here we just put the same URL, select the type from 
Mm. From your selection, select a field score. Ask that fields should be less than and so now I have a query from the verifier and this is must be embedded in your website and usually in majority of this like uh, verifications will be embedded in your Akidia platform or w what you are building or this is can be embedded in the smart contract so smart contract also can ask you the same question like is your CEO score like less than 200 this is, will be questioned from the smart contract and you can generate a zero knowledge proof and send directly to the smart contract. <clears throat> so here I will scan this QR code and share my screen. Okay, right now on the screen you see this is a request that was embedded in this screen in this query. So if I have the credential of this uh, type and the value is uh, less than 200. So I just approve this request. So right now is zero knowledge proof is generated on my phone. So I'm not sharing the credential itself. I'm just sharing the proof that I have this credential and the requirement is fulfilled. That field. Oh, okay. So I'm saying went wrong can okay, I one more tire in case since I don't have like, internet connection on my phone <coughs> so oops sorry so the zero output launch proof should be generated but uh, as usually uh, demo fail, <laughs> uh, and we will send uh, zero knowledge proof to the user. Oh, sorry, to the verifier backend. On the backend, we verify the zero knowledge proof, and that's it. Or yours, we send it to the smart contract. Then smart contract perform the verification, and just give you access to to the website, to the DAO, or like to your specific uh, web case. So, what you can potentially build, you can build like decentralized DAO, which will DAO or like ICO, where you can ask user to fulfill some criteria that maybe you should be about 18 or you should be like from specific country or not from a specific country or you should have or be a part of the specific group. And this is just up to you, I would say, what use cases uh, you will cover with this. Okay, I think that's it. Any questions, uh, comments? Okay, now, if you will build that with a Polygon ID, we will be here. Okay, I think there is one. Oh, let's see. Uh, this uh, SDK is in Swift as well, or is React Native only? Um, sorry? The SDK is in Swift or React Native? Uh, SDK right now the in the, on the Flutter, Kotlin, Flutter, Kotlin, and JavaScript. We're working on the Swift okay. as well and uh, on React Native. So I hope till the end of the year we will have uh, mobile SDKs in all of the pro platforms. Also, we have a JavaScript SDK. So like some companies just embed the JavaScript SDK in their mobile application, for example. You can generate the proofs. We have a prover for the mobile applications. We have a prover for like web browsers, uh, like of course for the desktops. But uh, this is up to you. Uh, I think uh, the majority of the platforms you can build right now. The same for verifications. You can, uh, we have uh, verification libraries written in Go and JavaScript, which is right now should be <laughs> good, good enough, at least for the beginning. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.